Hi folks, Tony Knight, Dog Listener here, and uh, this little audio is uh, some questions that I didn't get a chance to answer last night when I did a talk over here in Denmark, uh, because as usual, time flies, and uh, when you run out of time, I like the idea now that we can do these audios so people can still uh, tune in and get the questions that weren't asked uh, answered because they didn't have time. So uh, we did this recently with uh, in Holland as well, which you can check out the audios for those because it's good that the people can listen to the questions that other people would have asked and uh, maybe get some insight from for themselves as well. So starting off, I've got four here. First question is: Will the alpha ever eat? Oh, sorry, beg pardon. Will the alpha ever let the pack eat first? And if so, when? So we talk about with feeding that uh, to make things simple for, for people we say that in the wolf pack the alpha eats first and that's the general rule of thumb that makes sense because they have to be in you know health fit and healthy in order to do their very important job and so what we say to people is that uh, you should eat first before your dog to show your dog that you are the leader when it comes to life and death now this is uh, a good question and very rarely will that happen where the alpha lets the pack eat first when it would happen, the most likely scenario would be that they have made a kill, it's not a substantial kill, and the alphas have eaten first, and the others have what's left, but there isn't a lot. And if they make another kill shortly after that, the alphas may still be full. Now, the alphas may let the other members of the pack eat. Do you know it's usually though the puppies, because the puppies are the future, and of course the puppies can't look after, can't participate in the hunt themselves, and so food has to be brought to them anyway, usually regurgitated food, you know, it's already in the stomach. So it's, it's very rare, and for the purposes of working with our dogs, it's not really something we have to worry about. Second question, so how can we prevent our puppy from jumping up at us when we get home or when we have people over? Now I already explained that what we do here, the dog's trying to get your attention and so what you do is you pay no attention to the dog until it leaves you alone. Now the reason I've brought this one in is because of when we have people over. You want to get a little bit, bit of extra control and if you're, you know, if you've got people who come in and they're well dressed and they don't like the idea of a dog jumping up at them, because the dog could still jump up because it's asking a question, it doesn't know these people, doesn't know if, it doesn't Sorry, if these people are going to be permanent fixtures in the pack, so it needs to ask, where do, we, where do you fit in? And let me ask you a question. Now, if you want to avoid that, when you know the people are coming, then you could always put your puppy in another room for a little while, so that it, it doesn't immediately go up and jump up, uh, jump up at them. You can then prep your, your visitors, pay no attention to the dog until it leaves you alone, and even then what you can do to be in, in complete control of the situation is bring the puppy in on the lead. And if the puppy starts to try and get excited and jump at the, uh, the visitors, you can just simply, without a word, put the puppy back in the room, wait for it to calm down again, and repeat until the puppy gets the idea, OK, so if I don't jump up, what happens? And then, of course, the pup can stay in the room. Third question, we have a dog that always puts her head between our or other people's legs. If we move, she moves with us. Well, a dog that follows you absolutely everywhere is showing signs of, I've got to look after the baby here. I've got to make sure that the baby doesn't come to any harm. And so this is a separation anxiety issue, which, of course, um, I would have mentioned before, we've recently just done an e-book about that, so people can get that. It gives them lots of information about what to do about separation anxiety, even extreme cases. This doesn't sound like a very extreme case. But once more, put a dog that puts its head between your or other people's legs usually gets attention. When they do things like that, people go, what are you doing? And the dog goes, getting your attention, and it works. So, similarly with the puppy jumping up, this is just another way of getting attention. So pay no attention to it. You can always push the dog away from you, but when you do, don't look at the dog, and above all, don't talk to the dog, because the dog needs to see that it doesn't get your attention. If the dog carries on, then you could always, without a word, same with the puppy I just mentioned, put her in another room, so to show her that not only does that behavior not work, but it also loses the pack. Last question. Our male dog is sometimes attacking our female dog without any warning. He has bitten her a few times. Now, dogs that fight, the main reason for fighting, especially if it seems to be quite, you know, aggression, real aggression, is that uh, there's an element of panic about who's in charge. And the fact that it's without any warning, that means, to be honest, you're not really sure what you're looking at. There's, there's a very interesting point here. The male dog is 27 months old and the female dog is 9 years old. Now, a 9-year-old dog is getting on a bit, it's getting a bit old, and 
in a pack, if they were in nature, they would no longer really be a useful member of the pack. They wouldn't be around. Now, of course, what we can do, because we've, you know, we, the diets of dogs and we, we can look after them using, with, with the help of vets, for example, when they get ill, is our dogs live longer. But younger dogs are going, what are you still doing here? So, again, what we need to do here is manage the situation. If you feel that the male dog is even starting to create, you know, get get aggressive, or actually is in the the you know the process of attacking the female dog. Then, as safely as possible for you, don't put your hands in there because you know your hands could get caught accidentally. Try and get them to get them apart, and then the male dog gets put in another room on his own, isolation from the pack. You're showing him that behaviour loses you the pack. However, the important thing here is to make sure that both dogs realize that they don't have to worry about who's the leader in the first place. And that's where the dog listening idea comes in. What you do is you show the dog in a way that it understands that you are the decision maker. Because you've just got a dog here that maybe has got the job of leader inadvertently and is thinking, I can't cope with this, I'm going to panic, and what are you doing here in the first place? Get out, you're not going to make this job any easier. So it's a sad thing that, we, that when we realise that younger dogs will attack older dogs, but if, we're, if we appreciate it and if we accept it, then we can work with it and actually get the younger dogs to show some self-control. So, for that behaviour, loses the pack. Okay, that's all the questions I've got from the, the talk. Um, keep Keep your eyes peeled for new t in other times I'm doing this because next week I'm going to be in Sweden doing a talk and no doubt the same thing will happen. We'll run out of time and people's questions will be put on another audio. So that's all for me for this time. Okay, uh, thanks for listening. <laughs>